jumped the gun. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for staying with us. Last session of the day. I'm excited about this session because not only do we give, get to give you more time with Jonathan, but we have a special guest joining Jonathan on stage today, Mike Troiano, who is head of business products for AT&T, will join to talk about news that we're issuing tomorrow, announcing how together we're providing greater connectivity for, bus for businesses who are supporting mobile workforces. And this news is an important piece of our simplification story that Jonathan talked about today on stage. And it demonstrates how we continue to expand the options for our customers who want to buy and consume our products. So I'm excited to introduce Jonathan Davison, who will get us started. All right, well, thank you all for hanging in there with us all day. Really do appreciate the time that you've given to us, and I could not be more excited about what we're gonna be talking about between Mike and I. I just wanna take just 60 seconds to set it up, and, uh, and then we'll invite Mike up on stage. Uh, as we talked about in the keynote, as we talked about in the Q&A session earlier today, uh, we are at a pivotal time in the world around what we need to do with secure connectivity. There is so much complexity in the world and we are driving towards simplification. And there was a question earlier, uh, how do we go and what do we do with partners? Well, we have got a phenomenal partner uh, in AT&T who knows how to bring simplicity to market with, with scale. And so the, thank you very much. Uh, and so the news that uh, I'm about to uh, share with Mike, with all of you, just as a real quick reminder, is under embargo until 8.30 a.m. Pacific tomorrow. All right, so with that, Mike Troiano, would you please join me up here on stage, please? Thank you. Good afternoon. All right, well, it's absolutely great to, uh, to be here with you. Likewise. We have, uh, we have all of our, our press and analysts who, um, I mentioned to you, one of them actually said, okay, simplicity is great, but what about those managed service partners? Are they even important anymore? And uh, I think what we've been talking about is so much more important uh, than just a managed service partner. It's really about joint philosophical belief. So why don't I let you open the present uh, to, for everybody here and, and share with everybody what we're gonna be talking about tomorrow morning at 8.30. Well, first of all, I I want to start with shared vision, because I actually do think that that's important. I think, so I run products for AT&T business, so everything that we sell to small, medium, large business, all the way through the public sector, domestic, global, wireline, wireless, as just a, a backstop. What I think is important is there is a shared vision. You heard Chuck this morning, if you're at the keynote, talk about security, number one. I mean, that's what we hear first and foremost from every customer. We also have a shared vision around a consistent user experience. And I think what we've seen in too many places across the industry, companies aren't working together, and so you have inefficient experiences from one product silo to the next. And I think what we're gonna talk about here in a minute allows some of those barriers to start to break down. The third element, I would argue, is really around expertise. I joked with you walking in, and maybe I shouldn't joke, but we're both experts in networking. And again, when we put our heads together, or more importantly, our teams put our heads together, I, I don't know about you, but the team started to engage a few, a few months ago, and it's been amazing to me how quickly they got to some very definitive answers on where to lean in. So again, shared vision, great collaboration. The next thing I'd say, just before we get to unpacking everything, I think there's some shared trends that we also see in the industry. We started on, on security. The other two or three trends that I see that are really important to lean into from a, an AT&T perspective, the second one, first being security, the second one really is around cloud and the movement to the cloud. I don't see any model where there are fewer workloads in the cloud in the future. In fact, I think there are more. And so security, cloud going together becomes absolutely critical. The third component is hybrid work. It's here to stay, it's not going anywhere. And we've got to think about how mobility can be at the center of hybrid work, and that's the last pillar for me, which is we're seeing more enterprises move into business-grade, enterprise-grade, wireless-led connectivity, and we think that that's at the heart of a hybrid work model. You got it. All right, well, there's, there's certainly a lot there, and I do agree that I think all these things have, have been possible. I think we've been able to move very quickly with our teams, 
because of that philosophical alignment. And uh, you know, I think that you know, we're two big organizations, uh, and I, I know I remember working 20 years ago working to qualify a voice over IP product with you. Uh, so there's definitely been a long partnership between, uh, between these companies. You know, but the, I think what this, this new set of integrations that we're gonna be talking about and jointly being able to help our joint customers is, is truly powerful. We know that connectivity is top of mind for our customers. You've got a phenomenal network, uh, not only from a wireless perspective, but from fiber. And, uh, and the conversation that we've had about how do we simplify those outcomes for our customers, I think that's part of that philosophical alignment. So do you wanna talk a little bit about what you're doing from, from that perspective? Yeah, I'm gonna break it into, uh, I'm assuming most of you have seen or understand the, the high level announcement that, that we're talking about. Uh, but there are two big pillars that we need to lean into on, on what I'm gonna call phase one, because I actually think there are subsequent phases that we'll talk about in the future. The first, I'm going to start with SD-WAN, Software Defined Networking. Right, that trend is not going away, but when I step back and I think about what do we hear from customers, again, security, reliability is the other conversation that's part and parcel to that conversation. And what they're asking again for is consistent reliability, consistent experience. And when I think about taking the assets that Cisco brings to bear, combined with an incredible fiber network from AT&T, combined with a nationwide 5G network, and you start to think about how do you then have a conversation with a customer about a consistent, reliable experience where if anything happens to the fiber, wireless is right there to catch. The other part of the, the equation, we sometimes over-index on the solutions we sell to big enterprise and in the public sector, et cetera. We've had great success together selling software-defined solutions over the years to that, that client base. But when I think about the phrase simplicity, which you said a bunch today, I actually think there's a huge opportunity to simplify the offers, the buy flow, if you will, for small and medium-sized customers that don't have big IT organizations, big chief security officer departments, if you will. And so that's a great area where we'll, we'll start to lean in. And then if you start to really believe that hybrid work has to be rethought, mobility becomes the linchpin of it, uh, of it, then what are the pain points we need to go solve for collectively? I think just backing to, to broader trends, because trends do help influence how I think about the portfolio. You know this better than anybody, given your, your incumbency position, if you will, in, in wireline, landline-based solutions. You know, I don't know about the folks here in the room, but you know, at at and for the most part, there aren't that many desk phones on our desks anymore. Mobility is the heart of what we do. Everybody carries a mobile device. That becomes your business grade communication. So it helps influence then how do we build products that bring business grade experiences to our customers. Yeah, I think that's really, really important. And when you, when you think about the experience that we want to enable for our joint customers, especially at the lower end of the market, um, you know, the, the ability for that buying motion to be as simple as spinning up a workload is in the public cloud, right? And I think with the collaboration, actually I'd say, I know with the collaboration that we're doing that all of the mid-market and below will be able to take advantage of Cisco's leadership in the SD-WAN space and your leadership in, in the connectivity space. And what people really want is they want to think about their business. And I, I sometimes I've used the analogy of they want to turn the tap water on and they want the water to come out, right? They want the network to be there. And if it's fixed or if there's some problem and it falls back to wireless or if it's wireless and, some, and you need to, uh, to do wireless for the first 30 days while you get the fiber to the store, like the, that's what they want. They just want the outcome and the ability for us to come together and offer that to them in a very simple, seamless, package is so, so important. Well, I, listen, I think it goes back to one of the opening comments I made about expertise, the networking expertise, the, the ability for our two companies, by the way, I think companies in general, customers of ours, expect us to work better together. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to argue that fiber plus wireless together integrated with your products make a better solution set for our customers. But to your point, I often say to our, the, the product team that, that reports to me, just 
I understand how big CIOs buy, but just think about down market. Think about Mike's Pizza Shop. That's the coin that I throw out to the term, to the team. Mike's Pizza Shop. How is Mike's Pizza Shop going to buy, procure, know how to deploy? And to the extent Mike's Pizza Shop now has six Mike's Pizza Shops, how do they manage that in a very simple, to your point, they want to run their business. They're not so focused on the technology itself. And so a big opportunity for us to lean in. By the way, one more thing um, that is extraordinarily important for us to think about is that in many of those cases, Mike's Pizza Shop, it may not be AT&T direct distribution selling to Mike's Pizza Shop. And Cisco has an incredible indirect distribution network that we will build products and solutions for to help enable them to be successful with both of us moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it um, sounds like you might know something about Mike's Pizza Shop. We'll have to talk more about I've that. I've had later. pizza before. <laughs> so we definitely want to get to some special. I'm Italian. Of course. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a few, uh, few Italian friends here in the audience as well. Um, so when we, when we think about those kind of going down to the next level of, of detail, I know one of the big things that, that we see as, as a Barrett entry, we sell a tremendous amount of, of equipment together with you, but also around the world. And one of the things that people want is they want to have that consistency of, of experience. And so a lot of those devices that we're selling actually have a mobile interface in them. And so I think there's other places where we could, we could really start to, to work together over time to simplify those outcomes for our, for our, uh, for our joint customers and partners globally. No doubt. You know, <clears throat> you, you, I don't know if Chuck made the comment or somebody this morning about your IoT business and just the number of widgets, devices, whatever you want to call it. Um, for those who aren't familiar, Cisco is an incredibly important partner to AT&T in our IoT business. And we're, we're incredibly proud of what we've done together, not only domestically, but in many cases beyond the borders. And so when, when Cisco talks on stage about not only the growth in IoT, but certainly the connected vehicle as one of the growth drivers, a lot of that is the joint work that our two, two companies have done. And so when I think about the evolution of where 5G takes us, yeah. and, and we've talked a lot as an industry about I call it disaggregated 5G, but making our network more accessible to developers, companies like yours even, to integrate into next generation products and services. That certainly gets me excited about where that, that lens takes us. But even putting some of that aside for just a minute, going back to mobility in the collaboration space, right? What can we do to make WebEx more universal and a better experience for our customers? I, I, I was telling the story <clears throat> to some of our folks internally the other day. I said, you know, when I step back far enough, there's obviously a value proposition to Cisco. There's a value proposition to AT&T or uh, value creation for both companies. But when I think about the customer for a minute, putting the customer first, there really are two lenses. One is what does the end user see? And then what does the IT administrator of the business actually see? Mike's Pizza Shop. And We'll start with the end user for a minute, if that's all right. I, you know, because that's the question I keep getting. Which, what am I going to see different in a Cisco WebEx AT&T model than I, than I might see today? Um, we've heard this consistently from our customers as we surveyed them. Voice over the top is one of the biggest deterrents or dis detractors, if you will, for many customers using unified collaboration systems and platforms. And so when we step back and we think about, all right, if the trend really is toward wireless first, and by the way, I don't think that's binary, but certainly for some customers it is, um, how do we lean into business grade, enterprise grade wireless, where your mobile phone is truly the business identity across everything you do? Again, historically, your wireline desk phone, back up 10 years ago, right? The wireline desk phone was your business identity. That's the number you put on your business card across everything within the enterprise. So now mobile becomes your identity, number one. Number two, that works seamlessly across a number of devices. And we're demoing that here on the, on the floor for those who haven't seen it. The ability to move and transfer calls across a number of devices and have a common experience. Number two, we get very focused in on the voice quality because I don't know about you, but 
if the video drops out of a collaboration session, I can somewhat live with it as long as the voice is there. And so prioritizing what I call crystal clear audio is an important tenant of moving into the mobile space. By the way, we'll prioritize the Cisco WebEx um, application and video on the data network. And so there'll be more consistent experience to the end user. On the IT side, right now, if you just think about the problem set that they're dealing with, you've got employees that are using multiple devices. They're jumping around from a, a, an iPad to a laptop to a mobile device. Heck, maybe they have multiple mobile devices. Many people carry two. And so I think about the business who lost visibility and they lost the ability to, to move communications around like they did historically in a, in a traditional wireline model. Um, call logging, call recording, which is really important, call compliance um, in certain industries. You lost that. By the way, if you truly do believe that <clears throat> many companies are moving more toward a wireless first world, then I've got a lot of legacy infrastructure inside the four walls that is no longer relevant. And so there's a cost optimization model for the business. So I step back far enough and I think about the value creation to the end user, to the IT administrator, to, the, to Mike's Pizza Shop. And I think there's a really impressive story there. I, I think it's transformational for, for an IT administrator uh, and also for that employee, that user, who may not want to kind of carry two phones around anymore, but they want to have one phone, but they want a personal persona, and they want a business persona. Um, it reminded me that I actually finally checked my voicemail for the first time in six years a couple months ago, and there was one message, so I didn't feel too bad about it. Was it from it. your spouse? <laughs> it was from somebody trying to sell me something. <laughs> um, but clearly, I didn't call them back. I felt a little bad, but um, I think they probably figured it out after a few years. Well, of, to that uh, point, right? Now you're moving <laughs> mobile first, a common voicemail, common SMS across <clears throat> whatever platforms you use. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's bringing back some of the functionality that many of us grew up with over the years in a wireline world and making sure that we can apply that consistently in a wireless world. Absolutely, well I think we talked about why this is relevant um, for us. We talked about our philosophical alignment. We talked about why it's relevant for businesses, uh, large and small, including Mike's Pizza Shop. Um, and, I think uh, that's gonna stick. It's right, definitely gonna right, stick. Right, I mean, I'm never gonna let you, let you let that one down. Um, and, and certainly talking about um, where where we're going jointly with, with IoT, I think the partnership there is just another example of, of how that joint philosophical alignment focusing on the customer outcomes has, has been great. And you know, to, uh, to have Chuck talk about it on the main stage at, uh, at Cisco Live is a big deal. It shows you kind of where the industry is, how quickly it's growing. And I think we're still just at the beginning, less than 10% of all cars are connected. By 2030, 100% of all cars will be connected. Well, listen, I know that that team, much of it reports into you that, that helps us realize the vision. I, I think one of the messages, and we didn't have a chance to talk about this earlier today, but one of the takeaways I had listening to the keynote this morning is a tremendous amount of investment and focus on security, number one, at Cisco. And I, and I think, again, that's the number one issue <clears throat> that our customers expect us to solve. And I think the presentation this morning was fantastically laid out in the sense that you can't do it alone. You need partnerships, you need companies to work together. Um, there are insights that we see in our network. There are insights you see in, in your, your platforms and, and hardware and software that companies like ours need to collaborate around. The second point, and you've done it in the IoT space, certainly in the, in the SD-WAN space as well, is the commitment to software development and that user experience and trying to make it as consistent and simple as possible. And, those are two important areas for us to continue to collaborate on. Absolutely. Well, I think you know, talking about where we've been going with this, with this Cisco network cloud approach, and really it's a platform approach that will allow for cross-sell and upsell, and uh, us jointly be able to collaborate on that is, I think, a huge opportunity for, for both of us. But it's a huge outcome driver for our customers as well. So I will, I'm gonna pause there and see if anybody in the audience has any, has any questions. Um, we have uh, Sarah here who, oh, I think there's a hand up already. It's hard to see. we like, the lights are. Uh, Mike, the, one, of, one of the issues that, that gets raised a lot is when we talk about wireless first, mobile first, but within the office environment, 
is the vast majority still being carried over Wi-Fi? Is that infrastructure there, or are you beginning to see 5G and 4G penetrating into the office environment, into the manufacturing environment? Well, you, so you said manufacturing. <laughs> That's where I was going to go. Um, listen, I think there are certain industries where we'll see that take off, and I'll put that in air quotes because I think it's I think it's not a jet takeoff. It's still a Cessna, a, a slower Cessna Piper takeoff. Uh, listen, on um, I, as a general point, we have a lot of conversations with customers about what we do within those environments. There's still a tremendous amount of conversation around private networks in certain in industries like manufacturing. But I think we've been public around the sense that very few of these are at scale. There's a lot of kicking of the tires. Um, we understand the value prop, but it's also very complex for enterprises. And, and they need to understand that it's not as simple a private network as just managing a Wi-Fi network. The other thing we are seeing in certain industries, though, is, and this really comes back to a, a, an intersection point with IoT, uh, where there are mission critical applications, sometimes in manufacturing, we're having more advanced conversations about how you partition that and does it make sense where, in essence, 5G is the access point, if you want to think of it that way, as, as opposed to the Wi-Fi infrastructure. But I think all things being equal, if you look at the amount of traffic um, that we deal with that would go through the private or cellular direct into the enterprise, for those type of applications, we're still in barely the first inning. I will say one more thing, though, um, for whatever it's worth. <clears throat> we, we talk, you, someone mentioned it earlier. It might have been in, in your comment about in a hybrid work environment, at the end of the day, the hybrid strategy is really a network strategy, right? You're, you're at the mercy of the network whether that's your home network, your, your corporate network, et cetera. And I laughed because I was thinking about, or your hotel network. And I, and I don't know about you, but I don't have great Wi-Fi speed in my hotel room here at the Mandalay Bay. And I have a very, very important call tomorrow morning with some of our executives. And I, I step back <clears throat> and I think about, all right, what's my alternative? Well, I could go find different Wi-Fi capacity or, 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 or area, or I'm just going to go direct to 5G, and I'm going to trust that the AT&T connection is going to be my path out of this particular building. And I think that's what people have discovered over the last couple of years. The network is really critical. It's way more important. We didn't have these type of conversations three plus years ago about the, you just expected the network to be there. It was kind of like air. That was one of the phrases we used. Now it's a very different conversation, and I think it is very much industry and application-led in terms of where they start thinking about advanced networking. Love it. Hi, Mike. It's uh, Brian Washburn with Omdia. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> okay. And uh, I had a question about Mike's Pizza Shop. Sure. And I'm actually serious because um, well, Mike's Pizza Shop has been around for a very long time, and so what has changed now in AT&T's kind of view? What are you doing differently? that brings up Mike's Pizza Shop now for the way that you're going to engage with those kinds of smaller businesses or SMEs? I think it's a great question. I think there are a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> AT&T, like Cisco, you know, if you were to look at our customer base, we have phenomenal relationships with about two and a half million customers. We have most of the Fortune 1000 that buy some kind of service from AT&T, fiber, wireless. We have a lot of business with multinationals beyond the borders of the United States. When I think about small and medium customers, <clears throat> it's a slightly different conversation around distribution and actually which products and services they want to buy from us and how they want to buy it. I'm going to unpack that for, for a couple of minutes here. One is, I don't think that the buying trends are undeniable. Many of those customers down market want to buy more through a digital world than dealing with a sales rep. In many cases, historically, they've bought through our digital properties, but they also actually love to go into our retail stores. And that becomes the expertise for them because, again, they don't have the, the, the larger staff. Uh, and so when we think about together, how do we penetrate that deeper with the digital onboarding of some of the products and services, we, we think that leans right into it. 
The other conversation, <clears throat> if I just think about tr buying trends moving forward, um, Mike's Pizza Shop and, and Mike's Dry Cleaner and whatever other analogy you want to use, uh, in many cases also buy from localized or local uh, indirect value-added resellers, right? Again, in the case of, of your world, my guess is if, if Mike's Pizza Shop had a few branches and they wanted a, a collaboration platform, they're probably bu buying it from their local value-added reseller. So in our space, <clears throat> we have to do a heck of a lot more to embrace alternative channels, to provide them the tools to be able to provision our services and to, to have the support from not only AT&T, but I would argue from the other companies that we work with in the ecosystem. I think I just to add on, on top of what Mike said, I was thinking like Mike's Boba Shop. Mike's what? Boba Shop, you know, like Boba Tea. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, there's lots of different <clears throat> Mike shops. But I, I, I think to that point, we have a, you know, you all know that over 90% of our business goes through partners. And when you think about our products and services coming together and, and enabling that value added reseller to go and have that, that relationship for that initial sale, uh, that's, that's a really powerful combination as, as well, uh, whether it's uh, coffee shop, boba, pizza. Why do I feel like tomorrow morning we're going to wake up and we're going to see a lot of Mike's Pizza headlines somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like AI, right? Exactly. Let's talk about AI. Mike's, next, next week, Mike's <coughs> AI shop is coming up. I think there's a question. Hi, here. Uh, Tam DeLauro here. Uh, just wanted to get a little bit more detail, uh, if you're willing to share it, about uh, the product that you would be launching. Uh, I have a small business, and I'm interested in what you have to offer. All right. Am, your first am I just going to see this uh, I, if I go to AT and T website, or what? What is this? I think there. <laughs> I think there. Are, well, there are two products that we're we're actually going to be talking about. One is start. I'll start with the software defined networking. And <clears throat> again, I don't know that we've done a great job collectively leaning into small, medium-sized customers who have n those type of needs. Actually, it was interesting to hear the positioning from Cisco around the possibility of SD-WAN even being used in the home environment for hybrid and remote work. And so, so just stepping back a minute, the ability for a customer, again, to buy Cisco Meraki gear with AT&T Fiber, AT&T Wireless for that consistent, reliable, and secure, and through a digital property, right? So it can be pick, pack, shipped, if you will. And to the extent that they have multiple branches, being able to replicate that configuration. So that's, that's model number one. You'll start to see um, that offer in the second half of the year with our dedicated fiber product, and then we'll start to, and wireless, and then we'll start to move towards shared broadband. In the Cisco WebEx space, this is something that we, will, we are jointly working on today. You can see a demo on the floor. The, the part that I talk about, being able to move calls around, crystal clear audio, et cetera, that's under development. That will be released later this year for general availability as well. And quite frankly, it will be um, brought to you by not only the, in both cases, either AT&T and or the value-added resellers, the indirect channel partners that support both companies. I think you got your first lead, by the way. That was Tam DeLauro. I know, I know where she lives. Uh, I see her at the grocery store periodically, so. One more question? Anyone? All right. Oh, okay. got one over here. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm way over here, if you can see me. Uh, sorry to focus on Mike's Pizza Shop, but I'm really worried about Mike's Pizza Shop too. Um, so as we talk about this, this grouping of Cisco gear and AT&T fiber and services and all this wonderful stuff, that's not an outcome, right? So Mike's Pizza Shop is gonna to want, to want guest Wi-Fi. Mike's Pizza Shop is gonna want some sort of app control because he's got a POS system or she's got a POS system if it, Mike's a girl, sure. right? Uh, that they've got to protect. They're going to have other IoT devices in that network that's going to need to be secured, and then we're going to have to have some other kind of connectivity. And Mike makes really, really, really great pizza, 
but doesn't know diddly about broadband or security. So how do you take this partnership and actually use this partnership to create outcomes? I'll, let me start and then you can, um, so two things that come to mind very quickly. One is, I do think <clears throat> Mike's Pizza Shop is looking, they need to run their business. That was a comment you made, 100% agree. But they're looking for companies to lean in with the expertise. And, and in the Mike's Pizza Shop example, unlike big enterprise that has a big staff and they know how to do vendor selection, et cetera, um, much of that expertise will come through the value-added resellers that are already most likely working with Mike's Pizza Shop. That being said, you're going to see from both of our companies, if not tomorrow or shortly thereafter, um, a tremendous amount of co-marketing and messaging to create awareness of the outcomes. And to, to the point where the teams are working on our websites, how do we talk about it, how do we train on it, how do we use conferences and platforms like this to actually get to the outcomes. I, I agree with you, it's a problem and this is a great area where the two of us can lean in. Yeah, I would just add to that. I think this is the beginning of the relationship. The one the other thing I would say that Mike needs, Mike needs cameras. One at the register, one at the front door, maybe one watching the back door. And that should be part of that experience. There's a whole set of things that these folks need, but it's been very fragmented. It's been very complicated. Uh, and, what we've, and what we've seen, especially at this part of the market, once you have a platform that works, the cross-sell and upsell works really well. And I think that's, those are additional potential places where you could see us start to, to work. But we're starting with something that is the most powerful piece and where we have the greatest amount of synergies. He talked about being networking experts uh, across the board. So we're really excited about going there. And I'm getting the overtime exclamation mark flashing button. So I just want to say thank you, Mike, uh, for the partnership. Looking forward to, uh, to taking this, continuing to take this to market. And uh, hopefully we can be back again here next year talking about even more great things. And with that, I think I'm handing it back to Sarah to close on us here. Thank you.